All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Rachel York. I am a customer success manager and uh, community events expert here at Bevy. And today I'm gonna walk y'all through the new tools. Um, so we're gonna talk all about Bevy, all about the tools that you're gonna be using every day to run your events and talk to your members and just generally have fun without doing a lot of extra work. That's what Bevy is here for. Um, so best practices for today, ask me anything, ask as soon as you think of it so that you don't forget and so that I get to it. And after each segment, I'll pause for a second and we'll check Q&A and we'll go from there. Uh, please note, if your question is about a future segment, I'm gonna hold on to it and I'll answer it in that section. Uh, so without further ado, let's go. Um, so what we're gonna do, what we're gonna cover, um, in fact, everything that we're going to cover and more is available for you in a training library on our help page. So if there's any topic that you wanna dig in deep and you wanna dive in more on, you are more than welcome to do that. So you can get to this, um, we call it Bevy Academy. Uh, I'll be your host there as well. Um, and you can jump in and you can watch the lessons on any of this content at your own pace. Uh, so you can get to this at help bevylabs.com or you can reach out to our support staff at any time you'll get to them uh, just email us at help at bevy.com okay um, so bevy basics pretty easy stuff so what are chapters regions and events so my goal with this is just to get you to start thinking in our vocabulary uh, right so i know a lot of you are using meetup already so in meetup it's a group and bevy it's a chapter uh, for regions exactly what you think it is. Uh, some of you are in the Americas, some of you are in EMEA. So whatever region that your chapter lives in, you're gonna be grouped up. You're gonna be bubbled up into a larger group of chapters. Um, and then finally, events are events. They're in-person events, they're uh, online events. And what, we, what we're offering is all of this management all in one place for you. Uh, so we're gonna start by looking at uh, events docker.com. Uh, so this is your community homepage. Uh, so what, what's going to happen is members or potential members, they're going to start here. Uh, so you're going to have community events, you're going to have some announcements across the top here. Uh, Ajit and William are going to cover this for you. They'll, they'll cover down and they'll make sure the, the most recent updates are available in this top side. Members can search for upcoming events or for your chapter, uh, they'll ask, you know, it, it, this search and this search, they're about the same thing. They're just for different learning styles, right? Um, and then finally, you'll see we have that explore by region. Uh, so we've got the big virtual chapter. So this is where you're uh, getting your Docker all hands information. We've got all of the groups in the Americas. So all of your groups are already here, all of your chapters. Um, we've got the EMEA region and APAC. So everyone's chapter is here. Uh, what you can do is you can click through these and I'll show you a little bit more later um, about some of the, the other details you're gonna find. Uh, you're also gonna see uh, if someone wants to run a new chapter, uh, they can do that. So they'll click on become a community leader. Uh, they can come in and get additional information. So all of this is the overall Docker community homepage. And y'all are gonna work on different areas specific to your chapter, okay? Um, so your chapter page is going to have to stand out, right? There's lots of you. So I wanna get to know your chapter specifically, why you're awesome, why people should join your events first. So what, what this really holds, your chapter page, it's gonna hold all of the information about when, where, what time, and what you're gonna cover for your events. So your chapter, it's gonna be run by y'all. Uh, so we, you, chapter organizers, that's the term that we use. So that's you guys. Uh, you're gonna host regular events, both online and offline events will be posted here. All of that information will live together. And finally, your members or potential members, everyone, the way they stay in touch with you is they're going to join your chapter. 
Uh, once they join, they'll get the regular event updates. They'll get all of the email notifications. They'll get you know, upcoming event notifications. They'll get all of this. So the reason that y'all are in this event today is because you've joined the Docker Community Leaders chapter. So they're going to join your city-based chapter and uh, they'll be communicated with in much the same way. Uh, so your chapter page has a ton of information on it and most of this is customizable. Um, so you're going to have your, your the Docker logo up at the top. You'll have the navigation menu that we just looked at, like the, the community homepage, so they can get to all of those resources from your chapter page as well. Uh, you're going to have a chapter banner. Uh, so for me, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. Everything St. Louis is always identified with the arch. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could have a picture of the arch here and really customize and, you know, shout out for my city. We can have uh, descriptions, short descriptions. We Your chapter menu is going to be content specific to you and to your chapter. So uh, pictures, uh, event you know, updates and past events, all of those things, your about who you are and why you're hosting these events and who your chapter organizers and your chapter team are. Uh, if you have partners specific to your local events, all of this content lives on your chapter page. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna jump in real quick and we're gonna look at a chapter page. So this is our back end. So let's go back. Uh, from events.docker.com, you're going to log in. And once you log in, you're going to see something up at the top that looks like this. And this is your, your dashboard. This is where you get to all of this information. Um, so this is the back end. And what you're going to see is I'm looking at the Docker Community Leaders chapter right now. And under settings, this is where we control all of that. This is where we control the chapter banner, the about description, all the basic need to know stuff about the inner workings of your events. Uh, so you'll give it a title, whatever you want to call it. I think in most cases, y'all are city-based, so it'll be, you know, Docker, community events, whatever, uh, dash city name. Uh, you can go ahead and tell us more about you. And the way all of our text inputs work throughout the, the whole platform, you're gonna type what you want, and then you're gonna highlight it to manipulate it. Uh, so in this case, if you want a bulleted list, you'll highlight your bulleted list and you'll come in and you'll you'll grab that option. So type what you want first, go ahead and uh, highlight and change it up as you see fit. You'll have your location. Most of the stuff's gonna be set up for you um, and it already has been, it's been handed to you. Um, your list is your region space that you live in. Uh, but this content part, this is where you can start to change things. Uh, so you've been given a default logo. And this logo, what happens when people share, they'll click the button and say, I want to tweet about this uh, chapter. I want to tweet about this awesome events program. When they use social share, this is the logo that's going to go with that social media post. Uh, so choose your logo wisely. Um, and then finally, you'll be able to pick your banner image. So this is the big one up at the top. Uh, once you upload it, you can drag it up and down to get the best look. Um, and if you're ever you know, concerned about sizing, we've gone ahead and we've put that right here for you so you know exactly what to grab and how to do it. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can uh, you know, highlight featured videos. If you don't have, you know, think of these as commercials, right? If you don't have a commercial for your specific chapter, that's fine. But if there's a really cool Docker announcement that happened lately or, you know, some sort of content that you think would be valuable and would draw people to your group, go ahead and drop a, a YouTube link in here. Uh, you can also go ahead and add uh, social media handles. Uh, so in this case, once again, if you don't have chapter specific social media, that's totally fine. Point at the uh, the Docker ones and go ahead and build those out so that you can see them. Uh, the other piece is a lot of your groups are already tied directly to Meetup. Uh, so for the immediate future, whatever you input here is going to push straight to your Meetup group. Uh, so it'll go ahead and create the event over there. Uh, long term, that's going to be changing. 
Uh, if you haven't already attended yet, you need to make sure that you're attending the kickoff events and the activation events. Um, so over the next 100 days, something that we've been working on and we're super excited about, you're, you're part of this. Uh, but if you look here under our events, we have a ton of events coming up to answer all the questions and all the changes and all of the reactivation efforts. So just make sure you're attending these events and you get the uh, firsthand information from William. Uh, so for your settings, general settings, we kind of went through this first. So this is, you wanna make sure your about is updated, all your social handles, your featured video, all of this is updated. And once you're done with that, you can come in and you can uh, add photos uh, to your chapter. So if I jump in here, let's see what we got. Let's just say I want all of these. And I can go ahead and I can pick some photos. I can upload some photos, right? You want these to be you know, Docker specific. We want these to be about your user group, but you can upload as many photos as you want. And then the other piece, uh, this note just says I didn't save my changes, but that's cool. That's what I meant to do. Um, you can update your chapter team leads. Uh, so these are the humans who are part of your team who run events, send newsletters. Uh, you know, they're the spearheads of your chapter. So once you've added them, the way this works is you'll pick them from a drop-down list uh, to add members to your chapter team. They must first be a member of your group. So they will have had to have joined to be available to you in this list. And when you pick them, you'll have to fill in their title. Their email address will populate for you automatically based on their profile that they joined with. Um, I can choose to make them visible on my chapter page, you wanna do that. You wanna recognize them in most cases. And then you have two roles that you can choose from. So a community leader is a full throated organizer. They can do everything that you can do in the back end. Uh, but we also give you the option to promote someone to check in staff. So uh, think in person events later on down the line. Now, if you always hand the same person the clipboard and say, check, 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 everybody's here. Uh, you can assign them as check-in staff so that they can get recognized as well. And uh, this is for future us, uh, but we do have a mobile app for in-person events that will allow a virtual clipboard. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. So for your chapter page, you need to first thing you do, come into settings, make sure all of this information is up to date and it feels good and it invites people into your space. And you're going to find that by logging in, going to your dashboard, and on the left-hand side, you'll be going to settings to update these things. Um, questions. I'm going to I'm gonna pause for a second before we go into the next section here. I'm going to check Q&A. I don't see anything. Pretty basic stuff. Um, next up, uh, we're going to talk about events. We're going to talk about the good stuff. Um, so events with Bevy, they can be in-person or virtual. Uh, so your in-person events, you're going to have a different event type for that. We'll look at that a little bit later. I'll show you how to get to that. Um, they're going to be hosted by a single chapter. Uh, so if I host an event here in St. Louis, that event belongs to my chapter and my membership. Um, we're going to make sure that all of the events are relevant to our people. And uh, we can also offer multiple ticket types to an event. So let's say um, I want to host uh, an event with like a VIP category and I want to, you know, personally reach out one to one to certain VIPs for that event. I can do that and I can provide ticketing specific to them, uh, which is pretty cool. So we'll look at that in detail. Um, we went through crafting your chapter page. So now we're going to do um, creating and managing events. Uh, so this slide looks just like the other slide, right? Uh, that's because everything in Bevy is templatized. So your chapter page, your event page, your community page, everything looks and feels very much the same. And all of the templates and all of the backend forms, same thing. They're gonna look and feel a lot the same. Uh, so for your event page, uh, what you're gonna do, same thing. You're gonna have photos of the event, about the event, um, Yes, good question, CJ. So uh, can a template be shared across different chapters? Yes. 
So all of these templates are managed by your administration team. Uh, so Ajit and uh, William, they're going to manage these for you. They're going to get them set up. And if you guys have any recommendations or questions regarding those templates in the future, that's why we've set up these office hours. Uh, so on a regular basis, once we get through this 100 days of reactivation and re-education, you guys can meet with them and say, hey, I want a template to be able to do this. Um, and we'll get that set up long term. Good question. Um, so for your event page, what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here and you're going to go to events. And the way this works is in your drop down top right, each of these items in the drop down represent a template. Um, so like I said, the templates are controlled at the administration level. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and create a virtual event. And the way this works, top to bottom, left to right. So we're going to call this new event. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste on my keyboard. And this button right here, if you use a short enough description, like say one sentence, what you can do is check this box and it's actually going to show up on the header banner uh, for your event as well. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to paste some information in here and again, copy and paste and then highlight to manipulate. OK, so get your text in here, get it how you want it, and then you can go ahead and update that content. And one thing that's uh, pretty cool is I can actually click and drag content and photos and images. I can pull those into my event description. Uh, so you didn't see that full piece. But what I did, I just pulled up my fighter and left clicked and dragged um, content in as well. Uh, once you do that, you can highlight images. You can format them in the same way. You can add hyperlinks to those images if you want to. Um, so a little little hidden awesome. Uh, so it's not, it's not like super, there's no upload images or anything like that. Just everything's going to be a click and drag. Okay. So get your, your event description and your content ready. And uh, what you're, what you're going to see here are some options. So I have this pre-selected as a hidden event. Um, so this Docker community leaders chapter that we're looking at right now, this is a hidden chapter because it is exclusive only to y'all. It's only for community leaders. So I don't have it published on the main page. I don't have it available to the general public. Um, so because this chapter itself is exclusive, that means that all events that I publish here are exclusive as well. So they're by default hidden events. For, for everything that y'all do when you log in, it's going to be a public event unless you choose to check this box. Okay. Um, I want to show the event on my chapter page so I can do that. Uh, for those more exclusive events, if you want to disable the social sharing options so that you can give somebody that link, but not let them share it publicly. You can do that. And then finally, um, I want to allow automated emails. I'm going to talk about automated emails, a, you know, pretty long winded here in just a minute. But essentially, we have already set up for you the, you know, 24 hour reminder, the five minute reminder, all the basic legwork stuff is already created for you. Uh, through something called automated emails, and I'll tell you a little bit more about those later. Um, your event banner, same as your chapter banner. Uh, so for every event, if you want to get specific, you can upload a particular image. Uh, don't forget your sizing is right here in the platform, so you don't have to worry about what size uh, images you need to use. And same thing, your thumbnail. This is going to be displayed when someone socially shares this event specifically. Okay, so you'll go ahead and put that in here. And then your content, content is king. So you're gonna pick your start and end date for your event, pick your start and uh, time. You can use the, the buttons here to do that through the drop down, or you can just go ahead and type them in, whichever you're more comfortable with. By default, the time zone that your event is going to be hosted in is the same time zone that you assigned in your chapter settings, uh, but you can change this. So if you want to, you can go ahead and search for whatever time zone is relevant for this event, and you can update that as well. Um, this event will be hosted just once. 
or you can do uh, what we call recurring series events. So you can pick those as well. And then this is my favorite button, maybe in the entire system. Uh, so check this out. Uh, it's called the Bevy Magic Wand. And as long as your events are similarly structured and you're running something similar every day, uh, what you can do is use the magic wand. And this is gonna basically grab that agenda from your previous event, upload it for you, and then you can go ahead and manipulate and make changes as you need to. Uh, so the way this works, uh, if you change your timing, by the way, so let's check this out. I'm gonna change my timing. Uh, as soon as I hit tab, it should reorder my agenda. Uh, so you don't have to click and drag or do anything like that. It's all gonna be controlled by the timing here. And as soon as you update an activity time, it'll move it to the appropriate place in the agenda. Um, and you can close them out. If you go too far, uh, you can add new items or auto-populate. Uh, so for virtual events, where are you going to host the event? Uh, so Bevy Virtual is built in this is part of the system. That's what we're in today. Um, and this is probably going to be your you know, primary use case. This is what we would love for you guys to adopt because it is all in one. It's browser based. Your attendees don't have to download applications or, or, or anything like that to join you. That said, it is not the only option. Uh, so if you want to use Zoom or BlueJeans or any of those other tools that you're already using today, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, and what you'll do is you'll use the external URL. And right here, you would paste the Zoom link or the GoToMeeting link, whatever tool. Um, and what this does is when, um, when your attendees come to your event, um, there's that join event button that you guys joined to, to come in today. When they click that, it'll actually you know, take them to the Zoom location or to the GoToMeeting location somewhere like that. Um, Sujay, I see it. I will get to it. Um, give me just a minute and we'll talk about the limitations on the Bevy virtual stuff. Um, so we've picked our event platform. We know where it's going to be. If you're doing any you know, advertising tracking, you can do that too. I'm going to leave that out. We've set up our agenda and we've set up our basic uh, event description and things like that. So top to bottom, left to right. Next thing you're going to do is add your speakers. Um, so you can just add them from the speaker database. If they don't exist yet, what you'll do is you'll add new speaker and you'll fill out the form. Basically, this form replaces the you know, 9,000 emails we get as organizers every event that says, hey, send me your headshot, send me your bio, send me all your information. Uh, so what you can do is you can upload this once and this database is not specific to me in St. Louis. It's shared by all organizers throughout the Docker community. Uh, so what you can do is you can get into that Slack channel and you can say, hey, Rachel was awesome. Like you should make sure that she comes and presents for your events. And if fellow organizers agree, they'll find me in the speaker database and they can go ahead and just add me to their upcoming event. So you guys share this information. Uh, the more you add, the better. Um, and the more you communicate as organizers, the better this database becomes. Uh, next up, you can add sponsors to your events. Uh, so what this looks like on the site is they'll actually have their logo on the event page. They'll be included in event-specific uh, emails and updates. And uh, same thing is true. You can go ahead and add sponsors and partners to this event. So there are three tiers of this. I can have event-specific sponsors who you know, come and go at their leisure whenever they can plug in. That's awesome. I can have chapter-based sponsors who sponsor every single event that we host. And then finally, we can have global sponsors for all of Docker, which will be controlled at an admin level and is out of y'all's hands. Uh, so when you do get new sponsors, uh, same as the speaker database, you can come in and you can update this info. Uh, my favorite part is this includes contact details. <clears throat> excuse me, this includes contact details for those sponsors. Um, and this database is specific to your chapter. So these are your partners, these are your event sponsors, um, and only you, will, you and your chapter team will have access to this list. Um, and then top to bottom, left to right, last thing, 
we have to get people to register for the event. Um, so I'm going to start with RSVPs. I'm going to do 100 of these. Um, you can do limited time availability. So if you want to do early bird tickets or, you know, different kinds of things there, um, you know, you can leave a note for each of your ticket types. See you soon. I can't do both. You saw me type what I said. Um, and then you can also enable a wait list when this ticket type is sold out and you'll have control over that wait list. I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, and then finally, uh, let's look at that VIP sort of ticket type if we want to do that. Uh, so let's say I want to have 25 exclusive invites to this event. I can do that. I'm going to leave, I'm going to let them RSVP all the way up until the moment the event starts. I'm going to leave them, uh, you know, uh, a nice note. That's right. You're awesome. Come be a, a, a VIP for us. And uh, what I will do is I will hide this ticket type. I'm going to call it a VIP ticket. Oops. I'm going to call it a VIP ticket. And what's going to happen when I save my, my draft here, I'm going to come back to my RSVPs. I'm going to have uh, a URL specific to this, you know, exclusive access code. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and copy this link. And then when I send my specific invitations to my VIPs, this is the link that I will use for them. Um, and what it'll look like when they register for the event. Um, I don't have registration open, um, but when I publish the event, it'll say, that's right, you're awesome. Thanks for joining us um, as a VIP. And they'll be able to RSVP for the event as well. Um, so that's the basics. That's how you set up an event start to finish. Uh, one thing, uh, let's go back to our deck and make sure that we're on track, which we are. Um, so we looked at that a little bit, but there's, a, there's another piece and it's event data. And this is really important for you as organizers. And I know that you all know this. Um, how your events perform, what content you cover, how your speakers perform, all of that's really important to what you do next. Um, so per event, you get to ask your audience specific questions. Um, so the way this works, it's, it's double layered. So <clears throat> these blue ones that you see in this teal color, we're always gonna know first name, last name, email address of your attendees. So this is controlled at the administrator level. And, and then finally for y'all, you can ask event specific questions per event. Uh, so how did my speaker do? What topics do you wanna see next? You know, things like that. You can't change the admin level questions and you won't even have visibility into them, um, but you will be able to change and review the data for these event specific questions. So if I go back in here, I've drafted my event and uh, you're gonna see a, a pre-order form. So this is their registration form uh, prior to the event. And so you see uh, these have already been, you know, created for you by the Docker admin team. They're required questions, so you can't manipulate them. They're gonna, they're gonna be asked every time. But let's say uh, like you have dietary restrictions or you have event specific questions that you wanna know, you can add to this form and you can ask them prior to the event start. And then finally you have your post event form. So no questions here yet. Uh, so how did my speaker do? Uh, would you like to see more on this topic? What topic would you like covered? Uh, so for every event, you can pick um, what questions you want asked and uh, get some good feedback from your members. So make sure uh, that, excuse me, I clicked too many times. This forms tab only becomes available once you either save an event as a draft or publish it. Um, and then this would be like a second step. Make sure you come in and you get your... Uh, your forms covered. Okay. Um, and this is what it looks like. Uh, so when you have respondents to your questions, uh, you'll come back to forms and you'll actually click on post event data. And you'll see you'll have a line item for each of the respondents, how they responded to each question. Um, and you can also download uh, this content as a CSV. So you can really get to know, um, get to know your members and, and host uh, great events for them. Um, I'm going to wrap this section up really quick, and then I'll check Q&A. Uh, so we talked about sponsors and partners. Uh, it's really important that you note they can be event-specific, chapter-specific, chapter and community-specific. Uh, so the community part, you, you guys won't have to worry about. 
uh, but per chapter and per event, know that you can uh, distinguish between those two. Um, and next up, we're gonna talk about uh, chapter newsletters. So I'm gonna jump into Q&A. Um, can a template be shared across different chapters? Yes, absolutely. And you guys have ownership of the types of templates you would like to see. Uh, so the way that you will uh, get new templates added and you know change things about the, the UI and, and um, the templates available to you is you'll make sure you attend office hours and you communicate with William and Ajit long-term about what kind of uh, tools you need? It's a good question. Um, all right, uh, this one's a biggie. What is the maximum number of users that can join an event if it's hosted on Bevy Virtual? Um, so the short answer is 500, but that's not the full answer. And I've gotten to know you guys here at Docker, and I know you want the full answer, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so what I did is I went to help.bevylabs.com I'm actually going to drop um, this. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Check this out. We're going to do uh, So I'm in the Q&A tab as a host of the event. And what I want to do, answer live means that, you know, I verbalized the answer to everyone. Uh, but what I want to do here is I actually want to reply. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that article here in the chat. And uh, if your members are looking and wondering where that content went, it went to the answered tab. And you'll see I answered this one live, um, but I can actually view the answers here and the answered section as well. Um, okay, so now you want the actual answer to the question. Uh, so how this works is your sessions are limited based on the presenters that you have live on camera. Uh, so the reason that we say about 500 is because we expect on a you know a typical event to have anywhere between four and six presenters on screen. Uh, so today you can see we only have three, but if you think about it, you've got the host, you've got an MC, you've got a couple of presenters, maybe have a, a Q and A moderator. So somewhere around there. But the way this works is the number of speakers that you have on screen. So right now there are a total of three times the number of viewers you have in the space will equal the limits on your session. So right now we have three presenters that we have in the session. Uh, so you can use this as a really, really great guide uh, depending on the size of you're planning to have. And uh, if you're if you're looking at limits, you can go ahead and uh, think about this based on the number of presenters that you have as well. Uh, something new uh, that we offer is we also offer a um, we call it many to many. Uh, so if you go through this math, the maximum number of presenters you can have on audio video is like 51 and change. Uh, so what we have done is we've offered a, uh, a to many. We're going to get that turned on for y'all. That's in process right now. And what that will do is as 50 people maximum enter your event, everyone's going to be prompted to come up on the screen with audio and video so that you don't have to turn them on every time. Uh, so really, really good question. Sorry about the long-winded answer, but I wanted to make sure that you got all the details. Um, does anybody else have any other questions uh, for now? Are we good to jump into newsletters? I'm, I'm checking Q&A one more time. Okay, all good. So we're gonna talk about newsletters now. Um, so chapter newsletters are just the regular communications that you're going to send to your membership. Uh, so if you're like me, about once a quarter, I just touch base and say like, hey, everything's good. Here's the next event that's on the calendar. Please RSVP and share with your you know, teams, with your friends, with whoever. And oh, by the way, uh, Docker is doing this thing that you know might be relevant or here's current events uh, if you're interested in checking them out. Uh, so chapter newsletters are just for those in-between times, right? Uh, so how these look, um, you guys know this, consistent communication, right? Make sure you talk to them in between events. It's really important. Uh, so what, what these look like, get similar. Uh, so you're gonna have a subject line. You're gonna have uh, the Docker logo at the top. You're gonna have some copy and some imagery and you know links, things like that. It works the same way as the event description that we looked at. 
your upcoming events are automatically going to be populated into the newsletter and you can manipulate and update to include only the ones that you see relevant. And they're going to have links to go ahead and RSVP for those upcoming events. Your sponsors and partners are going to be highlighted. And uh, also at the bottom of each email, your members are going to have the opportunity to unsubscribe. Uh, so all the standard stuff, the unsubscribe is because that's, you know, GDPR compliance. That means that everybody can opt out if they need to. Uh, so let's go look at so uh, newsletter and email. Kind of use those words interchangeably uh, within our platform. Uh, so under emails, once you're logged in, uh, you can look at all of the emails either related to a specific event uh, by using the event dropdown, or uh, you can look at them by status or by both. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, limit my view here to scheduled emails. And you're going to see these look a little bit different. Uh, so this event reminder, 60 minutes, <clears throat> I have a little clock option, which means that I can reschedule that email. Uh, that is what we call an automated email. So every event that you publish to your calendar is going to come stocked with a series of automated emails. Uh, so you can see got a 24 hour reminder. So one day event reminders. And we've also got 60 minute reminders because, you know, virtual events, people, people require poking and reminding about virtual events. Um, so you'll see uh, all of the automated emails for each of the events that we have scheduled are already ready to go. If you don't like when they're scheduled, uh, you can go ahead and update that. The other type of event that you see here, or email, excuse me, um, is you see new event management tools available and you see send afterward. And instead of a clock, I have a pen. Uh, so this is a customized newsletter. Uh, so to create that, I would have clicked new email. Uh, and instead of creating a new email, I'm just going to go ahead and edit this one and show you what it looks like. Uh, so in your from, this is the, the from that you expect. This is who it's coming from. Uh, the sender email. So if you have a chapter specific email that you would like to show up in the, you know, Gmail category, you can go ahead and update this. You can choose your audience. So if you want to talk to all of your chapter members, you can do that. If you want to send a, a post event recap and only talk to those attendees who checked in and that you know were present, uh, you can do that. Uh, so basically, it's everybody or members with or without an RSVP and members who attended or didn't. So the, that's that's the, the basic audiences that you have available. You'll create your subject line. And then uh, as you've done everywhere else, you'll go ahead and create your messaging, highlight it and uh, manipulate it however you see fit. You'll see you have uh, hyperlinks in here. Uh, I've hyperlinked an image as well. Um, and as you get down here, you can, uh, we've got a hyperlink to the leader's dashboard. I'm sure you guys have seen these uh, these emails coming out. These are the ones that are coming directly to you as part of the activation plan. Um, and then finally, we have the signature with the, the image linked as well. Uh, for your upcoming events, you'll be able to these uh, and uh, what we'll do, every event that is on the calendar, it's gonna populate. You can remove them using the X until it's only the events that you want relevant to this newsletter um, and go from there. You can also click your sponsors that you want added to this newsletter. You can save it as a draft and you can also set test. Uh, so it's really important that you test emails. Uh, when, you, when you preview uh, your newsletter, what's going to happen is you're going to preview it in a browser. Uh, but y'all know and I know, um, this one's already sent, uh, the reason that you don't preview things in a browser is that's not how people read email. <laughs> they read email on their phone, right? Uh, so what you want to do is you want to send a test, go ahead and send it to your email. And then what you can do is you can bring that test view up on your phone, make sure everything looks copacetic. And if it does, uh, you'll go ahead and schedule and send your email. Uh, so newsletters, you're going to create from the email section. Go ahead and go new email. Um, and update all of your content that way. Pretty easy going, uh, pretty easy to understand. Does anybody have questions on the newsletter section? Okay. 
Um, I don't see any in Q&A. Uh, one thing too, I wanna note, I'm just gonna like touch on this. I'm just gonna skim right over the top, uh, but I wanna show you uh, as you send emails um, in your analytics section, uh, actually no, it's gonna be here. So in your email section, if you look at sent emails, uh, you'll actually get some pretty good basic analytics about the emails that you send. Uh, so you can see here, this was a 60 minute reminder. This only went to people who had RSVP'd for this event. Uh, so you can tell we have a small audience, but that's because we have a series that's happening every week over 90 days. Uh, so we expect to have a few of you every day. So that's, that's totally fine and acceptable based on our goals. Uh, but then you see for my newsletters, I delivered to 215 people on my list. That's almost everybody. 61 of you opened the email and then five of you actually clicked on the link uh, to sign up for the next event. Uh, so you can start to look at how well your emails are performing and you can start to make updates to your subject line and things like that too. Uh, you can jump into uh, help.bevylabs.com, go into the self-paced training, there's a whole lesson on data analytics and how to you know, combine all this information and really look at it. I'm not gonna go into it today, but it's there for you if you want. Um, okay, so next topic. We're gonna talk about Bevy Virtual. We've got about 15 minutes left, so we're, we're actually in pretty good shape. Uh, so Bevy Virtual, the whole goal uh, for this tool is I know as organizers, you're using Zoom, you're using BlueJeans, you're using all of these different tools. And from a member's perspective, what happens is it means I have to install all of these apps to participate in your events. Um, and it can be pretty stressful, especially if you have you know, organizers and speakers coming from, from different places and just every time they have to install a new function to participate with you. Uh, so Bevy Virtual, is Zen. It's all built in. It's all you know browser based. They don't have to worry about installing an additional app to participate. Um, and that was kind of our goal. We wanted everything in one place to help you out. Uh, so you've seen we're using screen sharing today. I've got recording. We've got you know all of the expected chat functions, DMs. We've got Q and A. We've got breakout rooms. So pretty much everything you have elsewhere you're gonna have here with the added benefit of all of your recordings are going to live in your Bevy login under the wrap up tabs. I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. Um, and this one's really, really special and we don't talk about it enough. Uh, so I'm gonna pull, we're gonna go back to inception for a moment. Um, so this is my Bevy virtual session that we're in today. Your your, your direct messages. So I'm in the community leaders chapter today. So we're in an event in the community leaders chapter. If I see Carolee at the all hands event or at other Docker events, an event anywhere on events, my direct messages to him are gonna be available in those other events as well. Uh, so when you look at this chat feature and you look at direct messages you know, for us, it's really about building community. So if you host your event on Zoom or you host it somewhere else, all of those communications one-on-one, -on -one, those relationships that got built, uh, they're not gonna be as readily available. So as long as everything is conducted within the same platform, uh, you really give your, your attendees an opportunity not only to connect within your space, but also to connect with other members and other Docker spaces and just wait and see what happens, man. It's, it's really, really cool uh, how that part works on our end. And that is hugely different uh, from some of the other platforms that you're gonna see. Uh, the other things we have, we have automated profanity filtering. Uh, you can mute everybody. You can report chat messages uh, as a host of the event, as a moderator, with them, block an attendee from chatting. Uh, if they overstep more than once, you can go ahead and permanently remove them from an event. Um, so you have lots of options there. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how some of those moderation tools work. Um, so if I want to, uh, so this pinned, uh, the way this worked is uh, Mariama came in and she pinned the message that everybody would see it at the top of their chat at all times. 
Um, I can send her a direct message. Like I said, that's going to live across all events. I can add reactions to uh, her message. So that's just, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want to do here. Um, and for other uh, moderation options here, I can delete messages. Um, and if you all check out your three dots, you're going to see um, things like report message, um, things like that. My view is what you can expect to see as an organizer of the event. Uh, so you're going to have the ability to come in and uh, delete messages, block chat, things like that. And from your attendee list, uh, the way this thing is structured is hosts of the event. Uh, so I am a chapter team member for the community leaders chapter, which means that I automatically have host privileges in any Bevy virtual event within that chapter. Uh, so your hosts are going to be listed first, and then everyone else is going to be listed uh, so let's say we want to bring Carolee up on stage. Sorry, I'm picking on you, but I've seen you at other events. Uh, what I can do is I can turn presenter mode on from here, and that'll go ahead and that will prompt him and say, hey, do you want to come up on screen? Uh, if he says yes, he can then you know turn on his camera and video. Um, the other thing I can do from here is I can set as a host. So this is a really cool option uh, for y'all because you're going to need help in virtual events. Uh, so by turning his presenter mode on, I've just given him the opportunity to come on screen, share audio, share video, and share a uh, presentation. What I haven't given him the ability to do is to So let's say you have somebody you really trust who doesn't want to be part of the chapter organizing team. They don't want you know permanent responsibilities, but they're willing to raise your hand and help you out for this one. Uh, what you can do is set them as a host, and that will give them do pin messages and reply and chat and block chat and do all of those, you know, moderation tasks for this event only. So you're not adding them to the chapter team. You're not giving any, you know, big extra scary permissions, um, but you are giving them moderation permissions for this event. So as soon as this event ends, they lose all of those extra privileges. Um, you send them a thank you basket and everybody moves on. They don't have to permanently add themselves uh, as a team, team member uh, to the event. Um, so pretty cool stuff. Uh, and, um, here, I've, I've added this. I'll give you guys the slides after the event. Um, but I used a bunch of different words that all kind of mean the same thing. And I just wanted to clarify and make sure we understand. So a chapter team member, so an organizer of the chapter, is automatically going to enter all Bevy virtual events as a host. So that means I have full host permissions, I have full moderation permissions, I can do everything um, that you've seen here. I can promote any attendee who comes into this event, we classify as an attendee. Uh, so as I've showed you, we can promote them to hosts, which will give them moderation permissions, or we can turn on presenter mode, which gives them just AV and uh, presenter options, okay? Uh, you can take those permissions away from them at any time. Uh, so whoops, we gave somebody a hot mic or I would like to clean up my space. Uh, so thank you uh, for being my guinea pig. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna revoke your presenter mode. Um, and so what you can do is you can turn them off at any time and just clean up your format. So if you don't want everybody on screen, you can you know, you can demote anyone at any time. Uh, the other part of this is for your attendees. So we've gone through all of this. By default, no attendee gets audio video privileges, unless we've checked that this is going to be a video only, fifty people only, small event um, option when you set up the event. And so we'll look at that again, um, kind of at a future time. And um, that's really, I think, all you need to know. It's super basic. Um, all, the, all the tools that you need are going to be in the uh, chat and attendees window to moderate. Uh, we talked about the sorting. So it's going to be all your hosts at the top, anyone you've given presenter mode who lives underneath the host but above an attendee. And then after that, all of your attendees are going to be sorted by first name. Uh, so we looked at that. Now, yesterday on the kickoff call, uh, I had a lot of questions. I heard a lot of questions about streaming um, and tools to stream and things, you know, to help enhance your event. 
and I wanted to I wanted to establish some uh, clear product lines. So today, uh, the Docker community, you guys have uh, the Bevy community platform, which includes Bevy Virtual, which includes this experience. You do not have access to Bevy Virtual conferencing. So there is a product in our space that allows for some of those things. But I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you a comparison uh, so that when you start asking these questions, uh, especially in your you know kickoff sessions and things like that with uh, with William and Ajit, you can go through and you can sort of see the differences between the products. Uh, so Bevy Virtual, all the stuff we've already talked about. Bevy Virtual conferencing is where you can live stream and you can push out to other uh, platforms and you can do some simulcast and you can have you know your OBS overlays and. StreamYard and things like that. So those things are possible within the Bevy product family. They are not possible in Bevy Virtual, which is the experience that you have access today. Uh, so I wanted to be very clear about that. Um, in addition uh, to some of those things, and uh, you can do networking tables, you can add sponsor boosts, like if you ever had a, I call them sponsor hallway, because I always gave them the hallway on the way to the food, so people had to stop and say hello. Uh, so you can have networking tables, sponsor booths, uh, you can do private sessions, um, and you can also have staff lounges. Really, conferencing is for much more elaborate uh, events, and our goal for the live stream and simulcast is for, you know, big main stage uh, sessions that will also be broadcast to other platforms. Uh, so I wanted to cover down on that. How long do we have? We have four more minutes. Okay, that's actually kind of perfect, because some of the content that I wanted to go over here is just super short and sweet. And I wanted to show you where it lived and make sure that you went back and you checked out the training library. Uh, so managing your chapter members, I feel like you're all gonna start asking this, how do I get my meetup members in? Like, what do I do? How do I get them to join the chapter? Uh, so first and foremost, you're gonna share the chapter page with them, get them to come in and join. Um, and the old way, you know, everybody just sort of got pointed at the same thing. Um, but the new way, the way we work, so this is William. Um, I'm glad he's not here today to see my animated version of William. Uh, so he is the spearhead for all things Docker community, right? These are the community leaders. So this is y'all. This is where you sit in the funnel. These are your chapter members that you've identified, that you've brought in. And this is everybody that they've identified and brought in. So where you sit in the bevy technology and the bevy funnel is you're sitting right here. Uh, so you want to get really good members into really good events, and we want to do word of mouth advertising. Uh, you can share all of these events on social media. You can do all of those things. And if you have an existing member list that you want to include and you want to start notifying about these events that exist, you're going to need a CSV with three columns, first, last, email, and you can upload them into your chapter. So if I come into members, it's going to load everybody. Uh, what you'll do is you'll add import, CSV, how do they consent to becoming part of your group, and you can go ahead and submit this. Uh, for now, do not do this because I am working closely with William and the, the Docker team to make sure that your meetup database, we're working to get some of that moved over for you. So you don't have to worry about this for now. I just wanted to show you that for future it is possible. You can also add, you can also manually add chapter members if someone asks you to do so on their behalf. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to share and um, member information goes, uh, you can look at members specific. Like you just want to see like, hey man, Rachel comes to our event a lot. How is she doing? What else is she involved in? Uh, so you can get my information, you can get my company name, my email address, uh, from what we call the member dashboard. You can see that I'm subscribed to two chapters within the environment. Uh, you can see how many events I've attended. Uh, so I've registered for six, but I've only attended four. Uh, so you can start to get a feel for, for how I register and how I respond. Um, and you can see which events you know I did register for and which events were most important to me. So you can get to know your members um, on a one-to-one -one level um, pretty well if you start to dig into some of the data that's available. Um, you can remove members from your chapter. Uh, that's only going to remove them from yours. So if they ask for the right to be forgotten, you can remove them uh, from the chapter. If they are members of another chapter, 
Like I was a member of two. Removing me from yours isn't going to remove me from the other one. Uh, so we leave that up to the members to manage their um, information. And if they do request to be removed from the entire site, that's something that you're going to have to push up the ladder and ask an administrator to do. And after seven days, they'll be per permanently removed and they've got the right to be forgotten. Um, email automation. I'm going to leave this for future us. Uh, so there's a full chapter on email automation and how this works and how this affects the events that you publish. Um, so in a nutshell, you're going to communicate with your members. You're on the left, they're on the right. You've got your chapter pages and your events pages. So there's a lot of automation there. Uh, we've got the newsletters that we talked about. So you can send newsletters as you see fit. Layered on top of that, we've got automated emails. So there's one day reminders, the 60 minute reminders, things like that. And then finally, we also have something called system emails. Uh, so I think we lost your audio. I'm so sorry. I can't hear I'm you. I'm sorry. What'd you say? It might be just me. <laughs> um, somebody else raised their hand if you can. Let me just refresh, maybe. Um, but so system emails are going to cover down for you on some uh, basic stuff as well. So make sure you check out help.bevy.com um, and uh, jump into the data analytics lesson and the automated emails lesson um, and to get there. So here's some of the training. Here's the academy that you're looking for. I'm going to do one last Q&A session here. Um, can we adjust the output sound level of a virtual event? Um, I feel like yes, um, but it's going to be uh, presenter specific. Um, so check this out. Uh, so under my output, I'm just going to make sure um, you can see I have lots of things plugged into my computer. Uh, you're going to be making sure you're selecting the correct microphone and that the output sound is managed on that presenter's end. Um, so I think what you're asking though is, is there audio leveling for the whole event? Um, and the answer to that is no. Uh, you're just going to have to make sure that you do check checks with your um, content providers. Oh, oh, you hit you hit it and I hit it. I missed Sorry. question two. Can you put question two back in? Um, yeah. The what, question. Is the, what is the highest resolution uh, the Bevy virtual recording support? Uh, I believe it's 720. Uh, I, th I think it's 720 HD. Um, so let's let's dig in and answer that question really quick. Um, Yeah, here we go. Uh, so recordings are going to come in MP4 format, and they're going to be at 720. Good question. Um, so I'm going to answer that one. Uh, where can we find the output recordings? Oh, well, that's a really good question that I didn't answer. Um, so once you have completed an event, what's going to happen here um, is it's going to go to the completed events section. And in your wrap up, you're going to have the session video recordings and they'll populate here and you can download each one of those. Uh, so if you choose to record multiple times throughout a session, you're going to have multiple inputs here. Uh, you can download them for you as the organizer to do post processing on. And then what you'll do is you'll upload them again from your base, whatever your desired, like if you have a, a YouTube channel or something like that. Um, so that's where these are going to live. Good question. I'm sorry I didn't cover down on that sooner. Um, next thing, can we share the output recordings privately only to attendees? Yes. Um, so what you can do uh, is when you set up the event, you would do so an exclusive event where you want only the content provided to those attendees. You would do a hidden event have everyone RSVP for that. And then using the wrap up tab, you would upload that content after the show. And because it's a hidden event, that means that that link will only be accessible by attendees who had it prior. Um, so that's, that's one way to do it. Uh, otherwise, any content you put on the wrap up tab will be available publicly to anyone who can, you know, navigate to that event. Good question. Um, and last one, can attendees adjust the output Oh, that's the same one. We answered that one. Um, yes, attendees can, you know, volume up, volume down on whatever speaker system they're using in their space. Um, and you'll just have to do a good check check with anybody. 
Um, okay, so that's all I have for today. We started five minutes late and we ended five minutes late. So I feel like that's a wash. Um, does anybody have, if you have any other questions, uh, let's do it this way. Make sure uh, that you reach out to us at help at bevy.com. Uh, Miriam and I will get tagged on that. We'll make sure we cover down and answer any questions that you have. Um, make sure you see it on the screen. There are at least two events for the next 100 days for the reactivation plan. Tell your friends, have your friends, tell their friends. Uh, our goal is at the end of this to have touched base with every single Docker community leader in the organization uh, to make sure everybody gets retrained, gets the latest updates, um, and really knows what's going on. Uh, so please, please do that for us. Help us out. Uh, we look forward to working with you. And uh, happy Thursday. We'll see you again next week for another reactivation kickoff. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.